Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Elias here to tell you about Scoreboard Football 2. It is a quick play possession based game that a lot of people are purchasing and having a good time with and by special request we're going to show you how the game is played and how simple it is. Now unlike a lot of games out there, Scoreboard Football has all the bells and whistles. It has the icing on the cake. You can play a game in roughly 20 to 25 minutes and every season, and I repeat every single season in both the NFL, professional and college football is available. Let's show you how easy it is. Teams are rated and they're rated based on the ability to draw cards. A typical game is represented by two decks of playing cards, standard playing cards, and three jokers, and two ten-sided dice and two six-sided dice. And each possession will result in one roll per team. Sometimes you may need a second roll but you're playing a full game based on the outcome of games. Teams are simply rated based on their ability to draw cards. This is taken from what they did during the actual season. Teams are rated offensively for their draw, and defensively they could take away from an offense's draw. They do represent a real game of football. The dice are used for twofold. One, they're used to dictate the time of a possession. They are also used to dictate a team scoring a touchdown. Are they scoring it by way of touchdown run or pass? Again, these teams are rated based on those abilities. And finally, they are rated, and you're using the dice, based on the length of a touchdown. So that comes into play. And if you look this way, up here, we're using a regular profootballreference.com. The links are given per season sheet, and you can easily go and find the teams you're looking for for the game. And then you simply scroll down to the players you're looking for. And from there, you're going to dictate if it's a rushing touchdown. You're going to simply click on the rushing touchdowns, and there they are in order because you're going to be rolling the dice to find out who scores the touchdown receiving touchdown they put them in order Kellen Winslow would be a number one tight end or number one receiving touchdown all the way down to Dwight Scales who would be rated three four five ninth on the list this is the 1981 season and for purposes of this video we're going to play the 1981 San Diego Chargers, a 10-16 and 16, against the 1981 Pittsburgh Steelers. They were 8-8. Eight and, eight. and we're ready to roll. Again, both sides will be rolling to see who's going to win the toss. The Steelers with a 9 and the Chargers with a 4. So the Steelers win the toss, and they will elect to defer to the second half. So that means San Diego will get the ball first to start. Quarter number one. Now what happens here is you're going to draw a card for the possession. First card drawn will be a kickoff. We need to have a joker or else it's just a kickoff. And it's a three, so it's nothing. So San Diego has the ball. Okay, now San Diego is an ace to six. They score a touchdown or a field goal. The Steelers are even defensively, so there will be no adjustments. The Steelers, meanwhile, are an ace to four to score. And the Chargers are plus one, so the Steelers are going to gain another chance to score every time they draw, so an ace to five. So here we go. Chargers have it. Ace to six will score. Joker means nothing. They did not score. So now they're going to go ahead and punt the football. Here on a punt, we're looking for an eight as a possible block or a return, which would be a joker. And it's a king. Now that is a possible fumble. Kings are bad in this game. Kings are turnovers. We got King Black, that means interception. You cannot have an interception on a punt return, so San Diego will punt the ball successfully. Now, what we got to do is roll to see how long the drive is. Roll two ten sided die. 
you got a six of the six, that's 12 marks. So each mark represents 20 seconds on the clock. So there's 11 minutes and 20 seconds. So that drive lasted about four and a half minutes and it resulted in a punt. So now the Steelers take over first and 10. Again, you're drawing a card simply for the possession only. The Steelers are an ace to four, but again, San Diego gives them a plus one. So an ace to five, the Steelers score. Queen, nothing. We got another punt situation. Steelers will punt a 10. It's a successful punt. No return, no block. So the Steelers punt away. We roll the dice to see. And simply, it's a four plus one. It's a five on the mark. One, two, three, four, five. So with nine minutes and 40 seconds left in the opening quarter, no score. San Diego now with their second possession of the game here in quarter number one. Air Coriel flips it again. Remember, ace to six scores. It is a six. It's a score, but it's a black six, which represents a field goal. So we have a field goal by the San Diego Chargers. Okay, we're going to look and we're going to see the Chargers... Their kicker, I believe, is Rolf Benerska, if you can pronounce that name. Great kicker from the 80s. And let's just double check to make sure it is Rolf Benerska. It is Rolf Benerska for the field goal. Now we're going to roll to see what it is. So Rolf Benerska kicks an 86, which is going to be a 50-plus yard field goal. 86, actually 40, because it's on the wrong chart. 43-yard field goal from Rolf Benerska. So the Chargers are on the board. And let's see. B-E-N-I-R-S-C-H-K-E. And he scores. Now let's roll for the con. Seven spots. So that's a total of 120 seconds. To so with seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, San Diego leads this one three to nothing. Okay, now we're going to see, flip a card to see did the Steelers score. Anything happen on a kick return? Nine, nothing. Steelers now, as we know, they are an ace to four plus one. They're an ace to five to score. They score. It's a five. It's a black. Black equals field goal. Unless it's an ace to two. If it was an ace to two black, we would flip again, and then that team would get a chance to score a touchdown if they got the royalty on the second attempt. But we got a Steeler field goal, so the Steelers have tied this football game up here in the first quarter. And I believe for the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's going to be Gary Anderson, if memory serves me correct. No, it's Dave Trout. Dave Trout with a field goal. And we're going to roll to see how long. How far was that field goal? 30. So it's a 30-plus yarder, 39-yard field goal by Dave Trout. And we've got a tie ball game. So Pittsburgh has tied it now at three apiece. And now we've got to roll to see the time. How long did it take the Steelers to score? Five plus seven, 12 marks. That's a long drive. And with three minutes and 20 seconds left already in the first quarter, we're tied at three. Here we go. Kickoff. Nothing happens on the kickoff. No turnover or anything. Now, the, again, Chargers ace to six. They score. That's a red three. That's a touchdown. Touchdown Chargers. So that high power offense scores a touchdown. And the first thing we're going to do is roll to see, is it a rushing touchdown or did Dan Fouts go to the air? 73. He went to the air. Touchdown. 73. All right. So a big touchdown for Dan Fouts and company. And we're going to look now. We're going to look and see who did the touchdown go to. So we go up here to our reference material. And we look and we say passing. It was all Dan Fouts. He played in all games. So we know he threw the touchdown pass. Now we come over here to receiving who caught the touchdown? Let's click on the TD. What does that tell us? It gives us the marks, their touchdowns, in order that they scored them. 
So we look and we see, okay, Kellen Winslow, he's going to be a number one on the sheet. He's going to be rated first. Charlie Joyner, second. Wes Chandler, third, and so forth. So now let's roll to see who is going to score the touchdown for the Chargers. 29 on our receiving touchdown length. The player results, 29, is to the number one player. Number one, if you look, is Kellen Winslow. So he gets the touchdown pass from Dan Fouts. So now we're going to go on this chart, the second chart, receiving touchdown length. How long was this touchdown? You roll two six-sided dice. You have 11. It's a short touchdown. So we roll, a, roll again, a 10 and a six-sider. That's what we have here. Let's see how long that was. Add them together. Six plus two is eight. An eight-yard touchdown pass from Dan Fouts to Kellen Winslow. Now we got to see if Bernerska gets the extra point. So we have to flip a card. All right. As long as it's not a joker or the dreaded king, we're in good shape. It's a three. Extra point is up and good. So Bernerska hits the extra point. San Diego is on the board with their first touchdown of the game. And the Chargers are off and running now, but we got to do one more thing before this drive ends. We've got to roll to see how long is the drive. Seven plus zero, which is a ten. Seventeen marks. That's a long drive. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It takes us into the second quarter to the 13-minute mark, and San Diego's now has the lead over the Steelers 10 to 3. All right, let's see what the Steelers can do. Can they answer? First, we go to the kickoff. Kickoff is a two, means nothing, right? No, because you needed a jack, a joker, to get the return. So now let's go and see. Steelers. One ace to five. They get a six. Uh-oh. What does that mean? If it's the number after their last possible score, that means it's a missed field goal. So David Trout misses a field goal. First thing we got to do is see how long was the miss. So let's roll under field goal miss chart. We've got a 16. David Trout missed the easy one. He missed a 34-yard field goal. All right, now that's not good, but there's ramifications to that because now the Chargers are going to be in business to score again. So the first thing we got to see, did a block come into play? An eight is a block. Let's see what happens. It's a king. Okay, it's a king of diamonds. All right, so... We know that there was a fumble there, but it doesn't matter because the play is dead. David Trout misses the field goal, and now the, the San Diego Chargers get a one-plus chance, an added chance to score because of the missed field goal. So let's roll to see how long of a drive it was. Two plus two, four. It was a short drive. 20, 40, 60, 80 seconds, a minute 20 off the clock. So it takes us to the 11.40 mark. But now, San Diego, if you're following, they were an ace to six to score. Now they, for this drive only, are an ace to seven because of the Steeler miss. Here we go, ace to seven to score. There it is, the ace. Touchdown, Chargers. San Diego puts another touchdown on the board. We're going to roll to see, is it a rushing or passing touchdown? It is a 94, which means another passing touchdown for Dan Fouts. Let's go back here to our chart on the board. We know it's Dan Fouts' touchdown. As you see in yellow, that's the possible receivers. We're going to roll to see which receiver gets it. It is a 73, which indicates number two this time gets it. That's Charlie Joyner. He's rated two. So Charlie Joyner catches the touchdown pass. Now we got to look and see how long was that touchdown pass. And we got to see, ooh, this is a big one, 65. This is a big one. This is a possible long touchdown pass. So now you take the 10-sided die, and whatever comes up, you multiply that by 4, 
and add the two sixes. So here we go. Oh, four. <laughs> four yards plus six plus four is ten. An 11 yarder. We thought it was going to be long and it was just an 11 yard touchdown pass. But nonetheless, the Chargers scored again. So that was from Dan Fouts to Charlie Joyner. And the extra point, don't forget about that. Flip it. If it's a king or a joker, it's no good. It's a three, it's good. So extra point, good. And San Diego now leads this one 17 to 3. We got a roll for our time. Let's do that. 6 and 1 is a 7. So we mark off 7 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 at the 820 mark. So you kind of get an idea how the game is played. All right. Now we're not going to play the whole entire game through, but what we are going to show you, if you be kind enough, let's get a close up of this. If you look at the score sheet, a standard score sheet, you have a highlighted areas. That represents the second quarter and the fourth quarter. Once you get to the two minute mark, it's like a two minute warning, okay? And the, the segments, the timing segments go from a 20 segment segment to a 10 second segment because you figure teams are in a hurry up mode on offense. So it gives them more opportunities, all right? At the fourth quarter mark, we have a highlighted mark from five minutes down to two and then down. Because, why? At the five minute mark, a team that's trailing or tied can go out into hurry up mode, all right? And basically that allows them to roll under the hurry up concept, which instead of taking the actual numbers of the two dice together, if they're in hurry up mode, they roll, and here you got a seven and a six, that's 13. Take that in half, it becomes a six and a half or a six. So that means you only mark six spots instead of 13 because they're in hurry up mode. So it allows them to move quicker, save time, which can ultimately help them to score and get back into the game. And then at the two minute mark, same thing applies there. You're in hurry up mode. But a key factor, if you're not doing hurry up, you could call a timeout. Each team gets two timeouts per game to stop a possession. A timeout is simply rolling these dice, and whatever comes up on a timeout, eight and two, you get rid of the higher number die, and you go with a low number. So instead of this being a 10, you get rid of the eight, and you got a two. So you only mark 20 seconds or 40 off the clock, and there you go. So it saves time. Another thing that's nice about the hurry up and the timeouts, and you see these dice go from one to 10. That means there could be up to 10 marks on each, 20 marks total. Well, when you're in hurry up mode or timeouts, these zeros are disregarded and eliminated. So if they come up, it's not 10. So you're now your dice rolls go from one to nine, again, saving time. So that's basically how scoreboard football two works. Again, you're just flipping for possessions, each possession, you're flipping on kickoffs, you're kick, flipping on punts, and you're flipping in case there's a turnover. Again, what do we say? Kings are bad. Kings are very bad in this game. Kings are going to result in an automatic interception or automatic fumble to the other team, which, again, you can go on the board here when you need to. Go to your web source site to find out who actually recovered the fumble or who scored on an interception return if there is a touchdown. Because if there, let's say, for instance, this was a king. You'd say, okay, we have a king, so we have an interception. Well, you're gonna roll again, you're gonna flip another card to say, okay, if there's an interception now, we know that on our sheet, if there is a two or a queen, it's a return for a touchdown, so you gotta flip again. No return, okay, you know the other team gets the ball after the turnover, they didn't score the touchdown, but their chances of scoring for the next possession increases by two. So they got a greater chance to score because of the turnover. Unlike other games, it has you just rolling for results. Scoreboard Football 2 gives you the ability to make decisions. Go for it on fourth down any time during the game. Or take away a field goal for a late drive gamble to try to get you back into the contest. 
Scoreboard football has it all. Onside kicks, rare plays, and more. Jokers are wild in scoreboard football, too. But that's essentially how scoreboard football, too, works. I hope I didn't bore you too much, and I hope you easily, easily understand the concept. Two charts, two pages, very simple to run. Again, everything is outlined. Everything's in, explained in the instructions. Please feel free to email or contact me through Facebook or whatnot if you have any questions. But again, it's pretty simple. Once you get into the hang of things, it becomes very routine, and you can easily play a game with stats, with some game icing, in about 20 to 25 minutes tops. Thank you for watching Scoreboard Football 2.